Hallelujah. Amen. It's good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. So we will take some time and just step away with God for a moment. Amen. The grace is present this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Yes, Lord. Right where we are this morning. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You are worthy, O God. Lord, you are mighty, O God, Lord Father. Lord, you are great, O God. You are awesome, O God, Lord Father. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. You are worthy, O God, Jesus. Lord, you are mighty, O God. Hallelujah, God. Great you are, O God. And there is none beside you, O God. You stand alone, O God, Lord Father. You are Jehovah, God. You are Creator, God, Father. And this morning, God, we come, O God, Lord Father. We come, O God, Lord Father, acknowledging you. Acknowledging you as God. Acknowledging you as our Lord. Acknowledging you as the God that overcame death, hell, and the grave, O mighty God. A God that gave it all for us, O God. A God that could never leave us, nor forsake us, O God. A God that could stick us closer than our brother, O God. You are that God to us, my God. You are, you are Lord. Oh, Father, you are God and a God that sits high and look low, oh God. Oh, Jesus, you are worthy, oh God. You are the rock in the wilderness, your worthy place, Father. Your worthy place, that rock was Christ, oh God. A pillar of God by day and fire by night, you are, oh God, Lord Father. You are our protector, oh God. You are our healer, oh God. You are our deliverer, oh God, Lord Father. And the Son of God, we thank you, God. We thank you. God, we thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for life, oh God. We thank you for being alive in the land of the living this morning, God. You say you came to give life and life for abundantly, God. And this morning we say, Thank you, God. Thank you for your life, oh God, for your breath of life that you have breathed into our bodies, God. We are grateful, God. We are grateful, God. We are thankful, oh God, Jesus. Lord, it's all because of you, O oh God, Lord Father. Lord, we need you, O oh God. We need you, O oh God, Father. Lord, you know all things, O oh God. Lord, you are the omniscient one, O oh God. You are the omnipresent one, God. You are the all-powerful God, Father. And we need you, O oh God, Lord Father. Lord, this morning, God. As we come, O oh God, as your people come this morning, God. Oh, Lord Father. We be our hearts, oh God, Lord Father. We be our hearts to receive from your throne this morning, oh God. To receive, oh God, Lord Father, whatever it is you have for us, Lord, Lord Father. Lord, I pray for that, Lord, you become a heart of expectation, oh God, Lord Father. Become ready this morning, oh God. Become ready this morning, oh God. Knowing that you are the God of the impossible, God. Lord, regardless of our situation, God, our trials, our troubles, God, wherever we are this morning, God, you are God that can meet us, God, at the point of our need, my God, Lord Father. Lord, this morning, God, we surrender everything your hands, oh God, this entire service, God. Lord, the worshippers, God, we surrender them into your hands, God. The woman servant, your man servant, God. Lord, for your entire congregation, God. Your sheep, oh Lord, God. Lord, you just have your way, oh God. Have your way this morning, Father. Lord, let your Shekinah glory go, God. Saturate the atmosphere, God. Oh, let your anointed fall afresh, God. And ignite a fire in our hearts, God. Lord, that we'll raise our hands, oh God. That we'll raise our voices, God. And we'll worship, oh God, a living God. Not a God that was made by human hands, oh God. Not a God that was made by stone or rocks, oh God. Or wood, oh God. Or mud or clay, my God. But a God, a Jehovah God, creator God. The God that created everything, my God. Hallelujah this morning, God. Have your way, God. Have your way, oh Lord Jesus. Have your way, oh God Jesus, Father. Oh Lord, give us for that, oh God, that our worship, God. That our praise, God. God, that our hearts, God. Everything that we do, God, would be on point, God. We'd be 
strategic God that Father when we when we when we send our arrows this morning God will be the comes of the enemy God it could be direct oh God Lord Father but our prayers oh God Father God as your man servant worship as a woman servant God a time, oh God, and a season and a reason for this time like this, God. God, you said, who have eyes, let them see, God, and who have ears, let them hear, my God. Lord, Father, people ask, God. Lord, we just thank you this morning, God. We pray that you take control, pray that you have your way, God. Oh, Lord, Father, I pray, God, and at the end of it all, God, Lord, Father, we will say, oh, God, Lord, Father, because it's good to come in the house of the Lord, Father. It is good to serve you, my God, Lord, Father. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, God, have your way, God. Have your way, O oh 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 God. Have your way, Jesus. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Let everything, O God. Let everything, O God. Let everything, O God. Thank you for the cross. Oh, Lord, I let your will, my God. Be done above all things, my God, Lord, Father. Thank you for your thanks, Father, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, glorify the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. His name is worthy. His name is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift up his name. Hallelujah. We lift the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let us get involved in worshiping God. Amen. As we focus on Him, as we look to Jesus.
joy that we have on our stages Hallelujah. sad faces Hallelujah. sad faces come on man we serve Jesus Amen. the king of kings and the lord of lords it's not a dead god we serve it's a true and a living god Amen. Amen. and I say this with no apology it's a true and a living God we sing. Amen. Amen. As we sing about this joy that I have, this world will give it Amen. to me. Amen. So we sing it with a joyful heart. The world didn't give it to me. No, no, no. This joy that I have. Where you go, you tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. That is how you make your light shine. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord, this morning. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We see how great you are, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. what you have done my God but for who you are to us Jesus we thank you and we say with a grateful heart this morning how amazing is your love hallelujah 
just worship you, Jesus.
this morning. You know God been good to you. Hallelujah. And just declare it by raising your hands this morning as we sing it one more time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. When we was lost, he found us. When we was sick, he healed us. When 
Lord, with issues in their life, Father, my God. Every spirit of addiction is broken right now. Every spirit of addiction is broken, 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 broken in Jesus' name. Every spirit of oppression and depression and frustration and worry is broken, broken, broken in Jesus' name. Touch your people this morning, Father, my God. report from the doctor hallelujah hallelujah believe the report of the lord for with his right you are healed there is a miracle on your way there is a miracle on your way claim it receive it accept it thank god for it lord let your power fall let your fire fall let your anointing fall my god in this place in this sanctuary and even those that are viewed online touch them in their home in their cars wherever they are Whatever part of the world they are, oh God, whatever might be the problem, I speak my God, healing and deliverance and miracle. Not you people this morning. Hallelujah. Lift up our hearts and our minds. Lift up our countenance, Lord, my God, because we serve a great and a mighty God. A mighty healer, mighty deliverer, mighty God, everlasting Father, the great I am that I am, Jesus, mighty mind, mighty God, hallelujah, you are a healer, deliverer, provider, we make up, miracle worker, hallelujah, and there is none like unto you, none equal to you, none can compare to you, Jesus, our Lord, our God, our Savior, our King. Touch your people, my God, touch your people. Yes, Lord, we worship you. We praise and we bless you. We are worthy of all honor, worthy of all glory, worthy of all praise, worthy of all thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And come and give the Lord a big clap this morning. Happy, are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. The powerful move of the Spirit of God in this place. Many of you have been healed. You have been delivered and set free. Hallelujah. And we have been having, you know, testimonies. Amen. We visited this a Sunday. What day was that? The Thursday. And we prayed for her and the report is that, you know, she has gotten up from her bed and was able to do some things that she didn't do. Amen. Sister Sanfredine was having some pains and was it last week she asked for prayers and, and her testimony is that that pain hasn't come back again. Amen. Give the Lord a big clap. We serve a true and a living God. And whatever you might be going through this morning. Oh, yes. And I know that there are other testimonies. Amen. But we don't have time for that this morning. You have the appropriate time. And um, what we thank God for his goodness, for his love, for his mercy. Amen. I know God has been providing for you. God has been making a way for you. God is showing you wonderful favor in various areas of your life. God is giving you breakthroughs. And the thing about it, the God that we serve is not limited to our economy. God is not limited to earthly limitations. But he says he will bless you according to his riches in glory. Hallelujah. It is above and beyond what we could imagine. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we may think or imagine. God is able to blow our imagination when he does those things in our lives. Hold on to Jesus, friends. Don't give up. God is able to make a way where there seems to be no way. 
Amen. For uh, the announcement before we go into the message this morning, well, this morning's communion, so we prepare our heart. Those of you that are viewing online, Amen. Prepare your communion elements, uh, your bread, your biscuit, your grape juice. Have it ready and prepared at the end of the message. We'll be having communion. We, we in the sanctuary will be supping at the table of the Lord. And we give you an opportunity to join with us. Amen. You may not have been able to make it here this morning. But there is no problem with that. Right where you are, God is able to touch you at the point of your need. So prepare your hearts for communion. Amen. Um, just after service, we want to have a meeting. Brother Bob and myself, we want to have a meeting with all the men. So all the men, just hold on a little. We wouldn't be too long. Just after the service. You could just come down in front here quick, quick. And uh, we want to have a meeting with you. Amen. So please don't go away. As soon as service finish, come down in front here. Alright. And um, you know, every year when we pray and seek the Lord, we don't just do things just so we pray and we seek God. And God has uh, led me to, to do some focused training in various areas uh, and aspects of church life. When I say general, everything related to church. Amen. This evening we'll be having one of those uh, sessions. And I say focused training. You may not be in this one, but you might be in another one. Are you following me? As I look and see what area applies to you. And what you can do in the house of the Lord. Amen. In all areas. Amen. So later, those of you that I've reached out to with regards to a, a area of focus training, you know who you are. And we're looking out to see you 6 p.m. this evening in church. Amen. 6 p.m. for that focus training. Make sure you walk with you. If you're going to get a, a blue pen, a red pen, and a highlighter. I have handouts. Um, so you could take little notes in between as well as you could highlight some very important points. So walk. I'll be giving out a folder to you with handout. So make it easy for you. And walk with a red pen, a blue pen, as well as if you could get a highlighter to highlight certain things that you need to remember. So looking out to see you this evening at 6 p.m. And as time go on and, you know, we look at other areas, there might be other persons... Uh, to fit in other aspects of training. As I see where you can fit. And make your contribution. In the house of the Lord. To the things of God. And for the kingdom of God. Are you following me? Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you Jesus. Hallelujah. This morning we continuing. On the teaching. Of heaven. God's abode. And my text is taken from Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16. And Psalm 24 verse 10. When you found it say amen. And make sure you put a, 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 just a blue background so that we can read the scripture very clearly. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 16. And it says, but now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly. Wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he had prepared for them a city. We're talking about heaven, God's abode. And Psalm 24 verse 10. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. And as we look at heaven, God's abode, this morning we concentrating on the, the topic. The kingdom of heaven. The king of glory. The kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you. For all that has been said and done, we thank you for the powerful move of your Holy Spirit. That people are already healed, delivered and set free. Lord my God, they may have come in with hurts and pains. But Lord, you have lifted their countenance. And you have given them hope. And joy and peace. 
so that they could enter into the future in a victorious way. Lord, this morning, my God, even as I share about the heavenly kingdom, that city that you have prepared for us, give us divine insight and, my God, understanding of your word. So that we start preparing ourselves, preparing our hearts, preparing our lives to enter that city. The kingdom of heaven. Help us, my God, to take heed to your word, apply it to our lives. Forgive us of all our sins, our iniquities, our shortcomings, our failures. Give us a total bath with the blood of Jesus, inside, outside. And help us, my God, to be receptive to your word. I rebuke every spirit of destruction. Everything that would want to come in our minds and our hearts to distract us from the truth that is in God's word. I rebuke it. Liberate our hearts and minds and our understanding. That we'll be laser focused on your word and be led by your Holy Spirit. Hide me behind the cross. These are not my word. They are yours. Speak to us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Three Sundays ago, we started a series on heaven, God's abode. We started up the, the three W's, who, what, why, and when. And last day, we, we looked further in terms of some other aspects of the kingdom of, of God. Thank you. Today, we're looking at the heavenly kingdom. The heavenly kingdom. What is a kingdom? What is a kingdom? A kingdom is a domain that has a king in charge. So that's why a kingdom, a king and his domain, kingdom. Are you following me? So the Bible speaks about a heavenly kingdom. There is a king. And as we read in Psalm 24. Who is the king of glory? The Lord God Almighty. God is king. In heaven. And heaven. Is his domain. Are you following me? Just as we have states United States of America Trinidad Tobago wherever you have we have states and you have head of states are you following me in the olden days there were kings and well we still have a relic of that king this or queen that and they have a kingdom not so and wherever they rule is called their domain And we were in the Caribbean and some of the islands were part of that commonwealth of nations that fall under a queen and always a king. Some have been liberated and become independent and some republican. But it began where a king or a queen ruled and took control of nations and that became their domain. Are you following me? So as I share, I want you to understand that God is king. He has allowed men on earth, in this earthly realm, to have powers and authority over their domain or their states. But in heaven is a heavenly kingdom where God is supreme ruler and leader, where Jesus is supreme ruler and leader over that heavenly kingdom and he has his domain amen so i put it in a simple way so that you could understand and that is a place as we have taught previously that is a place where there would be joy and peace and happiness no more death no more sorrow as we experience in the world today when you listen to all these gruesome killing and murders and crime. I mean, 
it really pains our heart to see what men are doing one with the other gruesome acts of violence it is very painful it hurts when you look at the newspaper when you look at social media and you see all these criminal activities it, it is very painful friend but heaven is a place that will not have those things you have streets of gold I was saying about the dimension of, of this heavenly kingdom it is square like a cube 1500 miles one direction 1500 miles in another direction and 1500 miles high a cube all sides equal that is the size of this heavenly kingdom and that heavenly domain you could you could wrap that around your mind how far is 1500 miles that is how how the size of of heaven and all that all that belongs to God and that is the place that God wants us to go and be and experience a place that there will not be no more tears or sorrows or pain or suffering always in the presence of God there will be no need for moon or stars or the Sun because the presence of God will be so brilliant in that place he would outshine those things And in our previous teaching we realized that there would be heavenly hosts angels worshiping God giving him honor and glory and praise and those of us who would join with that will be part of that choir singing praises unto God giving him honor and glory forever and ever and ever and ever and ever it would be a place that would be so energized you'll never get tired for eternity you never get tired oh, yeah. like sometimes we do our little walk and we're so tired in that place you will never get tired because God will energize you the presence of God <laughs> yes I get tired so often Sister Patsy is so happy to hear that there is a place I will not get tired. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That place I have no bakery. That place I have no restaurant. No clothes to wash. Oh God, all the all, 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 wife so happy. No wares to wash. Huh? No yard to clean, no house to mop. That place would always be so clean. And you're walking in streets of gold, like transparent glass. No cobweb in that place, no dust. Always bright and brilliant and clean. That is that heavenly kingdom that God. And Jesus has gone to prepare for us. He says, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am there, he may be also. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Are you getting excited already? You feeling excited about going to that place? When they say you're going on a little vacation, I mean, you, you already get so excited. Uh, and the day, the next morning, you had to fly out and catch a flight to go wherever. You can't sleep that night. Not so? Yes. You can't sleep that night. Oh, God. I hope I miss that plane, that flight. So, oh, with all that excitement, you want to make sure you make it. 
I'm telling you something this morning. We should be so excited about heaven and the things of God. Hallelujah. That you don't ever want to miss that flight, friends. You don't ever want to miss out on it. This world is so troubled, so much problems, so much issues. Hallelujah. Sickness and disease, pain. We should be excited to leave this place. And go to a better place. So the question is, how do we get to heaven? How do we get to heaven? As I say, heaven is a place. You'll be there for eternity. So John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the foundational text of how to get to heaven. Believe in Jesus. Make him your Lord and the Savior. For whosoever believeth in him should not perish. What is that perish? Should not go in the opposite direction. Perish is in hell. But you shall have everlasting life to be in the presence of God forever and ever and ever. So that is the main foundational text of how we could go to heaven. Believe in Jesus. Accept him as your Lord and Savior. Repent of your sins and say, Lord, I accept you. I want to be saved. I want to serve you. I want to live for you. And I want to make it to heaven. That is simple as that. That it costs you one cent. Hello? I know when you're booking ticket, it has time. Boy, if you're booking, the price will be real high. Especially busy time, summertime, and everybody flying out, taking holiday. But the price get double. Well, let me tell you something. This price don't change. This price don't change. Hallelujah. It is the blood of Jesus that has never lost its power. Hallelujah. It's the blood of Jesus that has never lost its power. Hallelujah. It's not cheap. It costs God his son. It is not free. Sorry, it is free but not cheap. Because it costs God his son. And that is the price of your ticket. The blood of Jesus. Accept him as Lord and Savior. Repent of your sins. And your ticket is booked. For heaven. One way. Yeah. Because when you go there you really want to come back. A one way ticket. Yes it's one way. For there is no other name on the heaven. Whereby we must be saved. But the name of Jesus is a one way ticket. It's not a two way ticket. Hallelujah. No a many way ticket. Hallelujah. It's one way. Because Jesus said I am the way. The truth and the life. No man cometh unto the father but by me. It is a one way. Many people philosophize it and says. Um, all the rivers lead to the same sea. All the rivers lead to the same sea. But friends, and all God is the same God. So, so I like to make a little humor of it. If they tell you, look, all God is the same God. You grow in a home where they serve in a particular God. And you say, well look, I decide to get saved and come to church. Why did it vex for them? If all God is the, well, all God is the same God. Well, go ahead now, boy. You, you go. All the river lead to the same sea. Where they vex for you for calling on Jesus for now? Simple common sense, understand? We way you vex for them. He going down the road by Pastor Bobby and never know they're messing up with their mind. Hey, what do you buy? Well, well. And all you say, all oh God is the same God. I just call it in Jesus' name and I, I, I go. So we have for. You understand? All that is be old talk. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So it's a one way ticket you're taking. Not two way. 
One way, not many ways, one way. And how, how do you get that ticket? Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9. It says, for by grace are ye saved, prove it. And not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So this ticket, you don't have to pay a price for it. This price was paid already. So God gives you it free of charge. And the price does not fluctuate. It has been so ever since Jesus went on the cross and died. And it's the same price. It is his blood that was shed. Verse 9 says, Not of works, lest any man should boast. It's not we could do to better ourselves to go to heaven. Hallelujah. We are saved by the grace of God through Christ Jesus. Saved by grace through faith. Put back verse 8. Let me show you how that, how that ticket is bought. For by grace are ye saved through faith. You just have to believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And he given you a ticket. You don't have to pay for it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. So this happens, making it to heaven and getting this one way ticket to go to heaven. I'm putting it in our kind of language with our kind of understanding. This one way ticket to go to heaven it's not what you could do, but it's what God has done to make it possible for you to go to heaven. It's not doing all kind of nice and fancy work and so on and to earn my ticket. No, no, no. It's just guessing. You could be how bad you are, how wicked you are, all the evil you have done. I say, Lord, I repent. I'm sorry for my wicked ways. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Wash me with your blood, Jesus. Save me, Lord. Deliver me and set me free. Hallelujah. And I believe it in faith that I'm saved. So it's by the grace of God through faith in Christ Jesus. So that is why it's not a ticket that you could hold in your hand and see. Are you following me? But you have that ticket in your heart. You cannot see it with your naked eye because it's by faith. But you could feel it in your heart that I'm saved, I'm delivered, I'm set free. The things I used to do, I will do them no more. The places I used to go, I will go them no more. It's a great change since I was born. So you know it, you could feel it that you have that ticket. To go to How many of you feel you have that ticket already to go to heaven because you give your life to Jesus? Wave your hand, wave your hand, wave your hand. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 1, verse 15. Hear yeah, what it says? And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Believe God's word. Take God's word to the letter. And I believe God's word. That is what God says. How I could be saved? I believe it. And you're getting that ticket to the kingdom of God. To make it to heaven. Let us look at, at John 3 verse 3 to 5. It says, Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily I say unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, uh, uh, answered Verily I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Repent. Be baptized. Be obedient to God. And your ticket is booked. So that is how you get that ticket friend. That price that was paid for Jesus. You by faith believe in now. You can access it. God gives you that. And say that is your ticket to heaven. Paid for in full. 
But the thing about it is that when things are too cheap, we feel it no good. That's all. And a lot of people miss heaven and miss the things of God because everything is free. If we start, a, if people start to say, well, hear me now, boy. If you really want to go to heaven, you have to put out so much and so much. Oh gosh, then more people want it, you know. You, you know, we like a lot of antics, you know. We like so much antics in our life. That those are the things that tantalize our ears and our brains and we feel that it will work. And that's why a lot of people, just, they just play that game with us and lead us down a dangerous road. Of false doctrines and all kind of things. So you say, alright, we, we have special lines for prayer, you know. You see this line here? A thousand dollars. You're sure your prayers go answer. That line is five hundred dollars. We are too sure. And as it goes on less and less, well, if we really are too sure. So who wants to be sure? They start to yeah, boy, better put out more. They take nothing like that in the Bible, friend. But the thing about it, human beings like them kind of antics. We grow up in it. We experience it with all kind of background. And, and, and when we see those things, we kind of fascinated with that feeling of work. No, no, no. Watch me. Come out of that. God's salvation is free. But it is cheap. It costs him his son. That's why you get a free ticket to heaven. A free ticket to heaven. A free ticket to heaven. We continue again. Remember I said that heaven is a kingdom. What is a kingdom? A domain that there is a king. A domain where there is a king. God is king. Jesus is king of heaven. His domain. So we book our ticket and you want to get permanent, re eternal residency there. Are you following me? Some of you might know what you're talking about, but you want to go to America and you want, you want to be a resident of America. You think it has happened just so? There's a process and a procedure, not so? You know, how much people still waiting 20, 25 years to get a paper fix and it fix yeah? God could fix you also. To become a citizen of a state. If you are not born in that state, there is a process and a procedure. We who were born in sin and shape and iniquity, we are not naturally citizens of heaven. There is a process and a procedure to become a citizen of heaven. Number one, to be saved. Your ticket is booked. But when you go in that foreign land, what do you have to show? You have to show your visa. Did you go through a process and a procedure to come in this place? Is your, vi your visa. How long are you staying for? Three weeks? Six months? Well, the, I think that the most is allowed for a visitor. So you would have gone through interviews, you would have gone through this and that and the other. Then you could go in the people's place. So yes, you have a ticket to go to heaven. But there are procedures to become a citizen and stay there forever and ever and ever. That is why not some people say, one save, always save. No, 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 no. You could lose your ticket. So don't, let us not follow the doctrine. Once I give my life to Jesus and I, I, I decide to serve him, regardless of whatever I do, I'm making it to heaven. No, you're wrong. You could lose your ticket. What did I stamp it with? If they if they deported you from a place, what did they stamp it? Deported. You could lose your ticket, friends. That is why there is a a life you have to live every day to ensure that that ticket is valid. 
So when you die or Jesus should come, you know you're going to heaven. Don't lose your ticket. Don't lose your ticket. I put in this teaching in that kind of way so that we understand it within how we operate in the world. Alright? So we are now want to be a citizen of heaven. A citizen of that kingdom. How do we do that? You got your ticket, you get saved. But you have to ensure that you don't lose your ticket. Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. Let us, let us hear what it says. And these things are ensuring that you don't lose your ticket. Who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So we, before we were saved, we were living in sin and shame and iniquity and darkness. The devil was weakening. Are you following me? But you give your life to Jesus. And you decided to follow God. God has translated us. And the thing about it, if we are delivered from darkness, why are you going back to get involved in darkness for? God delivered us from a, a life of wickedness and shame and all kind of crazy things we used to do. Why it is we having a desire to go back there? You're going to lose your ticket. So God has delivered us, who had delivered us from the power of darkness, where the enemy controlled us, and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So even while you are here, you are starting to enjoy some kingdom privileges. You haven't reached heaven yet. But you're starting to feel like a child of the king. And that is a confession to make. Eh? You see me? I am a child of the king. The day is coming I will go to meet the king. You live that life with confidence. Knowing that hear me. I have given my life to Jesus. Every day I try my very best to live a life of holiness and righteousness and purity. In my thoughts and everything. I am a child of the king. When I die, I know where I'm going. Are you following me? So God has translated us from darkness, from being ruled by the devil, saved us, delivered us, and set us free, and made us a child of the king. So we here are already starting to be ready and prepared. In other words, you're packing your bag, you're fixing your thing, all your business, because you know the flight is coming when you had to take that foreign flight. You're fixing your business. The day before or, or the night before you go, you are waiting for that time. There might just be a few things to fix, not so? Where's the few things you had to fix? Well, the day before you did, don't put something in the freezer, no? To freeze up your caring for your family. The pepper sauce, a char, curry dog, this, that, the other, that on the freezer already. You are waiting the morning to prepare that. Are you following me? So we have to be in a, in a readiness, a prepared state every day. All now we fixing. Lord, I want to live right. God, I want to do that which is right. I want to serve you. I want to live for you. Testings and trials will come. But God, I don't want to lose my ticket. Hallelujah. Because you have translated me from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. The kingdom of God. I am a child of God and I have to live by godly principles. So that is how you have to be prepared now. Psalm 24 verse 3 and 4. It says, Blessed, it says here, who, had, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in the holy place? Go ahead. He that had clean hands and a pure heart. Who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity. Nor sworn deceitfully. You see now how you prepared every day now to ensure that your ticket has value. 
have clean hands and a pure heart. That is a simple way to say, boy, live a holy and a righteous life before God. To maintain your ticket will have its value. As if you say you're saved and you're not doing that, you're going to lose your ticket. Have clean hands. He that had clean hands and a pure heart. Who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. Have a desire to live to please God every day of your life. These are just, how we call it, proverbial way of saying, live a clean life now. Have clean hands. And even internally, carefully things and, and the thought processes that go through your mind. Have a clean heart. Clean hands and a pure heart. Live a life to please. Are you understand what I'm saying here this morning? Oh, yes, so all those things would ensure that your ticket will have its value when time to make that flight. I know there's a nice song that says, I'll fly away. Oh glory. When I die. Hallelujah. By and by. That is the flight we're talking about. I'll fly away. These songs are so meaningful, you know. They are so meaningful. And verse Peter chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. It says here, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy had begotten us again unto a living hope. By the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled. And that faded not away reserved in heaven for you. You hear what God said? That is your ticket have value. When you live that life to please God. God has an inheritance. When you read there, there is an inheritance. There is great things awaiting you. It doesn't fade away. It doesn't get old. Hallelujah. It is there, ready and prepared for you. In other words, uh, you're coming closer and closer to mean your flight book to a better place. Your flight is booked to a better place. To an inheritance incorruptible. And undefiled. And that faded not away. It is sure. It is certain. Reserved in heaven for you. So I've used the analogy. Of, of having your ticket. Making sure it has value. And how to ensure. That that ticket. Has value. And by doing that. As you live life. With clean hands. And a pure heart. Every day of your life. God is ensuring that that inheritance up there is waiting for you. So now when you, again we go to a, another state, let me say you go to the states, and you decide you see the place, you like it, but you want to become a citizen of that place, there are processes and procedures, not so? After you get your visa, now you want to go, you want to have, go through some process and procedures to become a citizen. You have the green card and you have this and that and the other and then you have to go through interview and all of that to ensure that you get permanent residency, not so? I'm using the same analogy to show you that when there, someone becomes a citizen of that place, he has documents. Wherever he travels, he, he presents his document. I'm a citizen of so and so. And nobody can do him anything because he has his documents to show. Whether permanent residency, whether he has green card or whatever. And hear me, when you have certain documents, you can access certain services from the place free of charge. There are privileges that go with it. So let us see what kind of documents. As I say, I'm using an, an analogy. It's not a paper God will give you. 
It's not paid by the power. Amen? So, get that understand. But it's just, I have to bring it within a context and a way of, of teaching so you can understand the connections. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 19. It says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. So when you get your ticket and you're living a life to please God, you are ensuring now that you are no more just a weird visitor. But God is able to make you a citizen. You hear what the word citizen? With all rights and privileges that go with that citizenship or that heavenly citizenship belongs to you. So when you live right, do that which is right. You become now and that time to make it to heaven, you become a citizen of heaven. No, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. In other words, you, you would have joined the heavenly company. Those that would have gone before, who were saved. And there, you ever hear in general, you, you know, say, Boy, we know he lived to please the Lord. And uh, very soon, or the time will come, I will go to meet him. You ever hear that? Yeah. Because you know they have gone to be with the Lord. And once you continue living a life to please God, you know you're going to meet them. So you join the heavenly company of the household of God, of that kingdom. So you become a fellow citizen. Luke chapter 22, verse 29 to 30. And I appoint unto you a kingdom as my father had appointed unto me. That he may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom. And sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. God has a great job for us who go to heaven you know. He said you will sit on thrones. You would have privileges. You would have authority to do certain things. In other words, God fixing your business up there. So when you, you want to become a citizen of, that, of a particular place, you, you get your green guard, then you get your, your um, permanent residency status. All those are documents, not so? God will have paper, not paperwork, he have things in place that equates to that. It wouldn't be paper. It might be by the power of God. And then God appoints you and gives you things to do up there. Because you have privileges. You have authority. Hallelujah. As a citizen of heaven. So when you become a citizen of a place. You could apply and you could get a job very easily outside. You know? so, so when God... Makes you that citizen. He gives you privileges. He gives you powers. And he gives you authority that goes with it. He said that you're able to sit on thrones. Judging the tribes of Israel. Power and authority friend. That goes with it. Now sometimes it's kind of hard to wrap your mind all around this. But that's why I'm using this kind of analogy. Of how it works here on earth. A lot of things we can't understand. We don't only understand it in the, the by and by. Are you following me? And Revelation chapter 21 verse 27. It says, And there shall be, and there shall in no wise enter in it anything that defile it, neither whatsoever work it abomination, or make it a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm talking about documents. I'm talking about records. 
So when your ticket is given to you and you ensure by the life that you live. And God sees that life you live in. He enters that record. He enters your name in a book. So when the roll call is made. And I just put in this. And they check the book once your name is there. That is it. Your citizen. You are a citizen. So your name are entered in the Lamb's book of life. So we're talking about record, we're talking about documents. So I'll bring this analogy to show you that yes, God would have records. God will have your name in the Lamb's book of life. To show that yes you are that citizen and as you enter you have powers you have authority you have privileges all that goes with it I want to hold up there today when we come back next time we want to look at the Constitution of the heavenly kingdom. You know every state has a constitution. What you should do and what you shouldn't do. Are you following me? Where is the constitution? The laws. That govern the state. God has laws. Rules and regulations. That governs his domain. Or his kingdom. Are you following me? So that when we go through this teaching. We realize that. Watch me. The heaven is real you know. And we need to be ready and we need to be prepared. Praise the name of the Lord. So next week, or when we come back and continue, we're looking at the constitution of the heavenly kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord. Were you blessed this morning? Let's give the Lord a big clap. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all honor, all glory and praise. Father in heaven, we thank you for your word this morning. That you're the Help us, you whatever, help us to understand that heaven is real. And let us be ready and prepared. And live for you every day of our life. We thank you for doing it. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. At this time, we want to go into our communion. We call Brother Bob and Brother Wayne. And they're going to do help us with communion this morning. Let's prepare our hearts. Those of you that are viewing online, I hope that you would have put things in place to join with us as we sup at the table of the Lord. As you join with us in the sanctuary as well. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do we as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let him man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Friends, let us be worthy partakers. I ask the above to pray, and then we will pray. Almighty God and our Heavenly Father, who art in heaven and hallowed be thy name. Father, we give praise and thanks unto you and we bless your holy name forever. 
We thank you, Jehovah God, for your love and your grace and your mercy that you send your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross, who gave his life a ransom for us. And we thank you that we have salvation to the Father. And thank you for the privilege we have and the opportunity to sup at your table, to have fellowship and communion with you today, God. And fellowship and communion one with the other. And I pray this morning, Father, and I lift this emblem that represents the body of Christ. I lift it with thanksgiving, and Father, we receive it with thanksgiving. I bless it, I sanctify it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And thank you, Father, for your body of your Son, Jesus Christ, that was broken for us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this sacrament that we are about to partake of, that we do remember your death till you come. And we look forward to your coming, Lord Jesus, and the appearing of you, O oh Lord. And Father, we thank you, we praise you. I pray, God, that you will help us this morning. Whatever we have done against thee and heaven, and we have sinned against thee and heaven, that you will have mercy and forgive us this morning. Wash us and cleanse us with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And cleanse us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, from the inside to the outside, God. And make us worthy partakers, instruments and vessels of holiness and righteousness. That as we partake as one body, in one accord, in one frame of mind, in singleness of heart, it will help to strengthen this ministry and the body of Christ. That we draw closer to you, Father God. That we make every effort to live a holy and a right life, Father. And to serve you one with the other, my God. And to serve you in spirit and in truth. And to rather be your children as you have called us to be in Jesus, your son, mighty name. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name I pray with all thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Almighty God, as we lift these sacraments before you this morning, which represents your blood, O oh God, Father, we pray that you're going to help us to remember the work which you did on the cross. You said, O oh God, that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And I pray that this morning, O oh God, as we partake of this sacrament which represents your blood, that we would remember and respect, my God, and reverence the work which you did on the cross, giving your blood for us so that we could be washed clean of all our sins, of all our iniquities. And I pray, my God, that, Father, as we come before you today to partake, that you're going to help us to take it, my God, with sobriety, my God. And not taking it for granted, O oh God, that, Father, you died on the cross. But, Father, I pray that we would remember and we would make an earnest effort to earn and to deserve your forgiveness. I pray that as we take these sacraments into our bodies, O oh God, that, Father, you're going to wash us with your blood. You're going to create in us clean hearts and forgive us of all our sins and all our iniquities, O oh God. And help us to change, O oh God. That we would live forgiven lives. That we would live under your blood. That we would continue to live washed. We would try to live sinless and spotless lives. So that your, your, body, your body and your blood would not have been in vain. Cover us, O oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. As they place the sacraments here, you are free to come. Observe social distancing. And take your portion. And then we partake together as one cup. Take the bread of 
And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This doing remembrance of me. Let's partake together of the wisdom. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do he as often do as often he drink it. In remembrance. For as often as he eat this bread and drink this cup, he do show the Lord's death to the cup. Let's start with it. Thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege to partake of Holy Communion. Even for those that would have joined with us through the live stream, we know that there is no distance in prayer. That you'd bring blessing, you'd bring healing, you'd bring deliverance and miracles. And you'd touch your people. That every chain and shackle be broken. With your stripes, we are here. I speak it on, and I thank you for having done it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. While the glasses are taken up to be discarded, just reminding you of the announcement. We want all the men to just come down in front as soon as we finish. We'll meet um, just shortly, briefly. And um, don't forget the the focus training for those that I, I so make sure you walk with your red pen or your blue pen and your highlighter. Amen. And we start promptly at 6 p.m. So come in a little before so you could settle down yourself. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We take up our morning tithes and offering. Amen. For those that did not have the opportunity to give us yet. And let's all stand. Up. I remember who I was. I was lost. Shall we all pray this morning? Almighty God and our Heavenly Father, who art in heaven, and holy are you, Lord, and holy is your name. We call upon you this morning, Holy Father and Righteous Father, and we give thanks unto you and praise 
for our life that you have spared and for every soul that is gathered here this morning and every family and home represented here this morning father we thank you for everyone that made this effort to come out this morning that you will bless them and keep them and father we thank you for the worship team and the worship leaders that you will bless them and keep them and anoint them more and more god to do your will and thank you for your man servant and your woman servant this morning father that you will bless them and keep them and thank you for your word that went forth under the power and the anointing of the holy ghost that it has touched somebody's life it will bring somebody my god to the reality my god somebody has got my god gained something new with wisdom and knowledge and understanding of you and what you have prepared for us in the future my god and father we thank you this morning for all that is said and done in this service and i pray god that it will be a fruit and our fruit shall remain oh god and father we pray that you will bless and keep us oh god together and grow us in grace and in truth and all wisdom and more knowledge and understanding of who you are and all that you have in store for us and all that we should apply unto life and godliness in this life that you give us god Father, we thank you for all the tithes, the offering that everyone has stretched for their hands to give out of the labor, the first fruit. I pray, God, that you will bless them a full measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Shall men give into their bosom, O God? Do have sowed seeds that will give them the harvest, the abundance, and the overflowing. In Jesus, your son, mighty name. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you for everything and this time in your presence. I pray that you will bring us back to the next appointed time where we shall not fail to give you praise, thanks, and honor and glory in Jesus, your son, mighty name. And Father, I pray that you will pour out your spirit, let your holy angels take charge over us as we go on, as we break those doors. I cover every soul, every home, every family represented here under the blood of Jesus. Their vehicles, their homes, I cover them under the blood of Jesus. I pray for your peace, your safety, and your protection upon them, Father. And I pray, Father, that you will make a way for them where there seems to be no way. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name for everything, God. For you are a good God. And thank you for being good, loving and kind and merciful unto us. And thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy this day. In Jesus' your son, mighty name, we pray all thanksgiving. Amen and praise God. Hallelujah. All right, you are dismissed. Till next time, God bless you.